Hi guys, this is Shivarati. Welcome to the session on multi-threading in Java. In this session, we are going to look at what is the thread pool and what is the advantage of it and how to implement it. Okay, so let us go ahead and start. First of all, let us see in Java as uh, we discussed earlier uh, tutorials, we can create a threads in two ways. One is by using the, by extending the thread class and second one is by implementing the runnable interface. So whenever you are using any of this uh, uh, pro in any of the about two approaches what happens is you need to create a thread and then the thread what it is going to do is it is going to complete the task whatever the operation you want to perform and then the the thread will be terminated now you cannot again reuse the component that means i am talking about the thread concept but using the runnable we have a facility where you can create in first the first step is going to uh, define is how many threads you want to use in your application how many threads you want to use in your application then if we know those many threads what we can do is we are going to create a thread pool with those many threads so thread pool we are going to create let us consider 50 threads you want to use for your application what we are going to do is Using the thread pool, we are going to create a uh, uh, syst in the system with the 50 threads. Now, what happens is once you create a thread, uh, once you create a thread uh, thread pool with the 50 threads, now how many requests you want to serve? Then each time, they, let us consider there is a task which is needs to be executed by the particular thread. Thread one, let us consider thread one. Now, what happens is now thread one will execute that this task and once it completes this task uh, the, the thread one will be again placed into the thread pool like that how many threads you are going to create and how many threads actually working on the particular task once all the tasks complete again the uh, again these uh, the threads will be available in the thread pool for example if there is any problem happens for the thread that means uh, by uh, by processing one of the thread it has terminated completely then what happens is it automatically create a new thread and it will always make sure that that the thread pool contains always the fixed number whatever we provided so what is the main advantage of this one is so um, the first advantage of uh, uh, creating the thread pool uh, if we don't create a thread pool what happens is you always needs to create a new thread so this is the cost list operation because creation of the th new thread it requires the CPU and also memory and a lot of resources it, it needs to take and at the same time it will destroy also. So that is the reason what we are going to do is and, and one more thing is as the number of the request uh, increasing and uh, increasing and increasing then what happens is the number of threads you need to create also it is going to be increased. Hence in order to overcome all this process what we are going to do is we are going to create a thread pool with the fixed number of the uh, fixed number of the threads. Now let us consider you created with the 50, and you have a requirement to serve the 100 requests. Now what happens is first the 50 will take the 50 threads will take the 50 of the uh, uh, tasks, and remaining 50 will be in the queue. Once the 50 first 50 it will serve, then again it will uh, uh, go to the next uh, it will pick up the next 50 tasks and it will try to execute it so this is the process how it is going to uh, imp uh, it is going to use uh, internally now i am going to explain this one using uh, an a program uh, in the using the program so let us go ahead and see this is our example that is the my runnable this is the one i have created for to just to show the demo for uh, demo how to create a thread using the runnable interface now what I'm going to do is I'm just slightly modifying this one to uh, illustrate uh, to give you an example for the thread pool. What I'm going to here is I am adding the one constructor public constructor my runnable here it is going to take a one string argument. I'd like to say this one as a, a name and uh, uh, this value I am going to set one more um, uh, I'm declaring one more property here that is private uh, private string name okay i am going to set this value to here this dot 
name equal to name and uh, once I created just I created a one constructor which takes the one string as a one parameter and passed it now I don't want this for loop so instead of that what I am going to do is system dot out dot print and then start thread okay so I am giving as a name here so start thread it has given name and uh, I am going to sleep this every thread for one second thread dot sleep for one second and this is going to throw throw the interrupted exception I catch it once that is done, I am going to write one more system.out.println saying like end it thread and uh, I am giving again the thread name here. Okay, so this is the change I am I I have done for the my runnable and now if I go to the runnable demo here so previously what we are doing is every time we are going to create an object and then we are trying to start it now it is a uh, as we discussed it is going to be the uh, uh, it, it is going to be uh, very uh, performances is it is very um, performance impact will be more because every time you are going to create a thread and destroying it and again creating a thread so as number of the request it is going to increase more uh, button will be on the server hence the alternative way what you can uh, what we are going to do is we have an executor service okay so executor service which is going to implementation of the executors dot here you can say new fixed pool here you need to specify how many uh, how many threads you want to create when the system is uh, server is up or the system is going to be uh, uh, application is up so now I have given uh, I am exec I am created an executor service with the new fixed uh, thread pool size of 5 that means when I start this program initially it is going to create a 5 threads and now the, these 5 threads are responsible to serve the how many requests you are going to pass to this uh, executor so now what we need to do is in order to pass the uh, ex in order to pass the runnable object first of all what we need to do is we need to create a runnable objects so how we are going to create the runnable object is i equal to 0 i less than 10 i plus plus now i am going to create uh, 10 runnable objects runnable object equal to new my runnable and string name I am giving as my worker thread so this is also called as a worker threads means I am giving as a my worker thread of I now what happens is at the end of the each iteration what it is going to do is it is going to create a one runnable object now I want to execute it in order to execute what we need to do is executor service dot execute it is going to take the runnable object we are just passing the runnable object now runnable object now what happens is now what happens is every time it is going to create a one runnable object it is passing here automatically it will start the thread and try to execute it okay. now once this execution completes what I am doing is execute service dot shutdown and then while executor service is terminated if it is not terminated then we need to keep on waiting till the service is going to 
uh, execute service terminated for the each request. Once that is done, we can say that system dot out dot println all threads all threads all requests requests completed success fully. Okay. If it is not service, then all service all uh, requests completed successfully. So now if you see um, the code wise also previously what we are doing is we are trying to create an object and then we are trying to create a thread object for the runnable we are trying to create runnable from the runnable to thread uh, we are passing then we are creating a thread from the thread we are starting and from the starting automatically it will invoking but if you see here we are not doing those many steps yes simply what we are doing is we are creating an executor service with the fixed uh, thread pool with that we are going to provide the runnable object to the executor service dot execute it is going to execute and here one of the advantage of here is whenever you uh, whenever you sit with the uh, whenever you set particular uh, thread pool size even though more tasks are available then the worker threads that is called as a worker thread. worker threads will be in the queue until the previous ones will be completed once that will complete automatically remaining uh, worker threads will be com uh, will be uh, executed now i am going to run this program and we can see that uh, all the threads are completed successfully okay so this is the output of it if you see the sorry if you see the output what happens is it has started 1302 Four, then one has ended then after that five got started and then six got started ended zero then started seven ended four so like that all the threads it got executed successfully even though we have uh, defined the new fixed thread pool as five still it has capable to handle all the ten requests parallelly and also uh, and also it has reduces the uh, number of the lines lines of the code how we written for the previous implementation versus here hope you are clear with the concept if you have any questions please comment on my youtube video um, please do to please do subscribe to get more technical videos from my end